Good evening, you're listening to Sports Star, Jason Cunningham, Sandalane, taking you up to 1am. We've been talking West Ham all evening, and now I'm delighted to say, join us on the line now, who has phoned us up, it's the West Ham co-chairman, David Sullivan, who joins us on the line now. Good evening, David. Good evening. Thank you very much for phoning us up. What would you like to say? No, I'd just like to say, you know, some of the nonsense, you know, we get tweets about Andy saying he came back in a terrible condition. You get tweets saying he's a drug addict, all this sort of drib, complete and utter drivel, and, and it breaks my heart. I mean, he's, 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 he's twisted his ankle, which we thought was nothing, we then bring him back quickly to, to the world's leading expert in Baltimore, who says he needs an operation to be out four months, and it is, it is devastating for us, devastating for the club, devastating for the supporters. Um, you know, but it's, it's, a, it's a horrible injury, and he... It, it seems to be one injury after another. But mm. sometimes with players, what happens is they have a long spell of injuries. Uh, then they don't get injured for years. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I could show you examples over the years where players look very injury prone and then they never get injured again. Mm. And another player never gets an injury. And then he gets injured all the time. Mm. There's no logic in any of it, you know. Uh, David, are there any plans to buy another striker or bring another striker no, on loan for we, this? We, yeah, we have to bring in another striker. I mean... Um, and uh, we're, we're working on it now to either buy one or loan one or both, you know, because you, you can never have enough strikers. And, and really, with Andy gone, we haven't got enough. Yeah, we discovered uh, that last season, um, uh, David, when, when we, obviously we were struggling for that long period. No, it was that, that, that last Andy season. was out. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that Valencia was born, bought to play, therefore not in Andy's role but perhaps out well, wide. Valencia, Valencia can play all three positions, yeah. He, his best position is uh, in the hole, um, coming late off a big centre forward, as, it, as is Arati's best position. But Valencia can also play wide. He started as a winger, and he was only converted to a centre forward in the last 12 months. Mm. So he's a high-scoring winger. Uh, but, but Valencia's not that tall. When you actually stand next to him, he was in my office last week, and he's you know, he's not that big and not that tall. Although he le- his leap is enormous, he outjumped the England centre halves to score against England. Um, his work permit application is on Tuesday. Um, hopefully that should be a formality, but you never know with these things. I mean, the way our luck's running, but if that should be a formality. I'll be devastated if it's not. Mm. I mean, he scored more goals than England football team at the World Cup. So <laughs> if that doesn't make him an exceptional talent, I don't know what does. That wasn't diff- difficult, though, Dave. But, uh... No, I know it wasn't difficult. <laughs> he's, still, he's, still in, he's still in the top 10 goal scores in the World Cup. And his team got eliminated. He's got every goal for his country in the World Cup. So it's, it's pretty pretty impressive. If someone got three goals for England, yeah. we'd be, yeah, we'd be through to the next stage. David, listen, £15 million pounds is a lot of money. It's a huge amount of money for West Ham. It's, it's, actually, highest... it's, it's, it's actually more than that. It's about and seven. It, okay, let's say, okay. Well, it's 15, and, it, and, it, and, it, so... and it goes up depending on where we. I mean, the joke is we finish in a certain position at the table, they get a pile more money, right. whether, whether guys play the game or not. But it, and he's also the highest paid player in the history of the club. Yeah. And, it, and it's unfortunate. We probably made a mistake in. You know, as I say, don't put all the eggs in one yeah. basket. We've yeah. got an awful lot of eggs in one basket. So the old proverbs or cliches yeah. are, are very true. But at the same time, we, we have to accept this moment in time. The players devastate the same as we are. Mm. And we have to make the best of it and get on with it. Was, uh, but in the meantime, we have to get some points. Was there any sense of regret um, after the, you know, last summer? We did put all our eggs in one basket. And to be fair, us Hammers fans were, were really chuffed when you made him a permanent sign-in. Yeah. No, what, what, was there a regret that you hadn't split the money up and, and, and maybe signed sort of more no, than one player? No, had we known what uh, what we we know now, but it's easy to be wise after the event. I've, I've said before, you, you wouldn't have signed the player, but at the same time, you you, you have to anticipate. You know, we was assured by our <coughs> physio, who has since left the club, uh, that the player would be available for the start of last season. He, he wasn't available till. January or February. So, you know, a mistake was made. We were given wrong information and we based our decision on the purchase of the player based on medical evidence, or not evidence, but what the medical department told us. Uh, And we've changed everything in that department as a result of that. Um, So, at the same time, on his day, he is a devastating and fantastic player. He's just got to get him back to his best. And, um, 
in the, but at the same time, we can't start the season with the strike force we've got. I don't think it's good enough. I don't think there's enough height in it. Mm. And, and if we get another injury, in terms of quantum, it's, it's insufficient. So, you know, we have to sign at least one more player. Dave, the, the West Ham fans, as we know, are, are incredibly vocal. And they were vocal on this show. They're certainly vocal at Upton Park about the style of football. And Big Sam and, and, the, and the fans had a little bit of a fractious relationship. Now, there was a lot of meetings, we believe, at the end of last season about the style of football. Teddy Sheringham has been brought in. Can you tell us, uh, give us a flavour of what those meetings involved? Well, basically, we, we, we told the manager that we, we want uh, a more attacking form of football. Um, but at the same time, the manager has to pick the team. It's his decision what he does. We're more involved with the transfers this year um, because we think we haven't spent our money well in the previous years. Um, and we hope we'll spend it a bit better this summer. But, you know, it's not easy. I mean, you get Arsenal go and spend thirty, forty million pounds on one player, and they're the teams we've got to compete with. So it isn't easy. Yeah. But we think what we bought this summer is better value for money, and made, and we got to, at least we got some more lottery tickets that could turn into jackpots. And what about Teddy uh, Sherman's involvement? How did that meeting go? Well, and how did Sam yeah, receive no, the news Sam that Teddy was very, involved? Te- well, Sam picked Teddy. I, I, I wouldn't show you that. We just said we want an attacking coach. He thought it was a good idea. And Sam picked Teddy, was his number one choice. And um, if Teddy just picked us one or two goals that we weren't going to get, it's a fantastic achievement. And it's going to make a huge difference to the season. And I just think we didn't get enough goals from set pieces and corners. There wasn't enough movement. We just didn't score enough goals. David, uh, uh, I think... a, lot, a lot of fans will say that, you know, when we got Big Sam, uh, it, it was hardly an unknown quantity. It was well known exactly what his uh, approach to the game was, his tactics were like, and, and it was well proven that he'd been successful with them. Therefore, how, how would he respond to, to... How did he respond when you and your co-chairman said, well, actually, we want you to adjust that model that, that we no, hired Sam, you on the basis Sam, of? Sam actually thinks if he has the players, he can play very attractive football. I know Tony Pulis, for example, is known as a similar type of manager... But he's determined this year to show to the public that Crystal Palace can play very attra- mm-hmm. attacking good football. That's why he'll be bringing in a different type of footballer. So, I mean, what we do need, we do need a plan B. That's all we've said. Uh, and we didn't have a plan B last year. And we have to vary it game to game. Um, and and, and that, is, that is the plan. How influential uh, were the fans about that decision? I think, I think they're very influential. You must listen to supporters. I mean... If you take the whole game, it wasn't the Swans against the whole game, uh, where where we won against ten men, and Sam put his ear to the support of the booing, mm. which was a very strange thing to do. But I must say it was a very very strange evening because it was a game that was vitally important. We won it, and I felt as low as I've ever felt in twenty odd years as an owner of a football club where we won a game. I did. It was the most strange strange evening. And I don't know why. We should have all been elated. Mm. But we weren't, you know. And I felt exactly the same. And there were, there were games last season. I had tears in my eyes, you know. I mean, you know, Knott's Forest, Man City. You know, it just, it just isn't good enough. Um, that said and done, we, we have a contract with the manager. We believe in honouring contracts. Uh, we, we stick by our managers. We have a history of sticking with our managers. Uh, and, and that's what we intend to do. Um, but... You know, that we've raised the bar a little bit. I mean, the, the Sam was never told that uh, survival w- w- was his target every year, and that's a complete myth. Um, I mean, we may have said that is the minimum acceptable achievement, but that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for the up there competing with, with the good teams, which isn't easy, uh, but we'd love a cup final. We'd, lo- we'd love to get into the top six. You know, top half would be quite good. Um, but you, you have to start the achievement with the, with the ambition that you, you're going to be competing at the top of the table to disable 17th is a, is a success. Well, I don't think it is. It's, 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 it's not a disaster. It's not a success. That makes sense. Mm. David, we, we fans were left in a sort of a kind of a hinterland just after the season ended in terms of there was reports of meetings and so forth. How seriously... Did you and, uh, and and David Gold consider 
relieving him of his duties? Because it seemed well, to be reported that there was a, a, a no, moment, a few days, where you were seriously no, contemplating it. No, I don't think we ever contemplated. Only if Sam was unreceptive to what we saw as the future in terms of uh, in terms of attacking a bit more, bringing in new players, us being involved with more with the transfers. And we're not months. We've been in the game twenty odd years. And I just looked at what we spent the last three years, and there's not a single player we get our money back on, let alone a profit. Mm -hmm. And it's not that we want to sell them, but you'd like to have on the field players with a value in excess of what you paid for them. You've actually got a better team out there. So you know we we we, we we're not a selling club. We haven't sold a player of any significance since we've been at the club, um, and we don't we don't want to. But at the same time, you want players to be out there justifying their fee and playing like a player of their cost and value and wage is not higher. Well, you know, uh, perhaps uh, the uh, reason uh, we haven't had bids in is, is because, you know, we bought Matt Jarvis. You broke a record for Matt Jarvis, and Matt Jarvis is a great little player, but he's not worth more than you bought him for, like you say, and then you broke it again for Andy Carroll, and it's the same situation. Yeah. So we haven't actually, I assume, I mean, I don't know, you do, we haven't had bids in for any of our players. <laughs> no, we've had a bid in for virtually nobody at any stage. Um... And, you know, this is why we want to be involved in the buying. Not, not, I would stress, not that we want to sell anybody. It's because we're not a selling club. But you just like to think you've got three £25 million pound players out there because then you've got a better team. And what we want to do is build and buy a better team. Mm. Um, and, and that's why we bought a few younger players. We've buy so many old players, playing it so safe. You have to gamble at some point and buy a few younger players. And we bought a few younger players this summer. We've also bought Mauro Zerati from Argentina, mm -hmm. who is a fantastic, fantastic player, if he's given his chance. Um, and he will shock a few people. I mean, we read him at Birmingham when he was 90. Mm -hmm. and he's a fantastic player. And he's a current leading goal scorer in Argentina. We're currently bringing in the leading goal scorer from Mexico. Um, and these are good players. I mean, it, it, it's a complete myth here. You know, the English players are the best. Right. Uh, there are some good English players, but they're very expensive. Um, and what we're bringing in are, are players who could be top, top, world-class talents. Uh, and, and we hope they're proved. But unfortunately, we've lost a key ingredient, which is Andy, yeah. uh, who is a fantastic player. And then there's a few games. I mean, his first goal against Sunderland last year, when, he, when we played against Swansea, he set both the goals up for Kevin Nolan. Uh, but, you know, in life you have to overcome these things uh, and get on with it. Uh, and and I'm, I'm devastated for the club, mm. devastated for myself and the board, devastated for the supporters, and devastated for the player. Well, all, all of us so we fans. We've seen him for four months. All of us fans are devastated. Just one last quick one, uh, David. We really appreciate your time. Um, Winston Reid is reported to have uh, rejected a contract offer from you guys today and uh, there are also question marks over Ravel Morrison two of the fans favourites what are their futures well I'm, I think we will get to a deal with, with Winston and um, we're also trying to negotiate it. I mean Sam has said well, that is not part of his plans but we as a board do see him part as part of our So Sam plans. has said what? Sorry, Sam has said what? Ravel's I, not I think part. He said in a, I think he said in a press conference, if I read it correctly, that he's not part of his plans for this season. I think he said that in New Zealand, but we don't agree with that. And, um, you know, we, we would like to sit down and give him a longer contract. Uh, we do like him. We do see him part of the long-term future of the club. Mm. Um, but we have to agree with the manager because, you know, there's no point signing a player he's not going to play. Um, so, you know, so both, both balls are in the air as regards to uh, Winston and, uh, and Ravel, but both are players we like very, very much. Dave, listen, uh, I really appreciate you phoning up. It's, okay. been, it's been fascinating speaking Super. to you. Uh, make sure it's not the last time you phone the sports bar as well. Oh, well no, I won't do it again. <laughs> yeah. I want to, uh, I'm sorry about that. Dave, just, really appreciate it. I'm sat here listening. Cheers. Well, <laughs> usually we rely on young Jack to keep us updated. <laughs> yeah, no, Jack gives you everything. Jack on Twitter. Jack <laughs> oh, he's on yeah. Twitter. Who's the man? Dave, yeah. listen, okay. I, I really appreciate cheers, you. Thank David. you so Dave much. Have a great WHU. summer. Cheers. There right, you go. Right. Cheers, David Sullivan there, uh, West Ham co-chairman. Any thoughts on that, West Ham fans? Some, uh, some brilliant insight there to how West Ham is being run. Ravel Morrison, he has been told. Sam Allardyce said he doesn't want him there, but he just heard there the co-chairman saying that.